Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Killing, a Japanese dramatic thriller from 2018 that was directed by Shinya Tsukamoto. Now, this is set during the tumultuous mid-19th century Edo period of Japan. A masterless samurai, played by Sosuke Ikematsu, finds a peaceful life in a quiet village, but that existence comes under threat with the arrival of an older samurai, played by Shinya Tsukamoto himself, seeking to recruit a band of warriors to fight for the Shogun. The young man has never killed someone before, but finds his pacifist ideals being tested to the absolute limit, as swords are crossed and conflict ensues. So yes, this is a samurai-era film, <clears throat> but it definitely feels like a companion piece, to Tsukamoto's last film, Fires on the Plane, from 2014. Not only in its themes, but also its forced setting and overall intensity. You know, the fact that it's a period piece is also a similarity, though the time periods are different. Now, these two movies would actually make a very nice double feature. They just, they feel like they go together. Like many of Tsukamoto's movies, Killing sets itself apart from a typical film in its genre. You know, it's not a typical samurai film. It feels like a Tsukamoto film at the same time, of course. It's, uh, I've heard some people classify or label or describe this film as being an anti-samurai samurai film because of its themes and, and the way things play out. And it's, it's kind of true in that sense. It also has a unique aesthetic due to the way the shots are framed, as well as its uh, usual atmospheric scoring that we get in Tsukamoto's films. So, again, you get that style that you typically get with his movies. Uh, it uses a slightly magical and calming ambient score. It's also a bit creepy at the same time. Sound design is accentuated in spots. For example, and I noticed this immediately, is that whenever a sword is drawn and there's like a standoff, you can feel the hands of the characters gripping the handle of the sword. It almost feels almost, you know what I mean, like a gripping sound, and it's really accentuated. And there's also a little bit of a twang from the sword that's infused into the sound design as well. It really like elevates the tension of the scene, even before the sword starts swinging. So that was pretty cool. I like that. In general, the film has kind of like a gritty tribal feel to it. You know, you've got the old school houses, Japanese houses. You see people work in the rice fields in the smoldering hot heat of summer. Uh, the forest has uh, loud cicadas, and you can hear the birds chirping, stuff like that. You know, it's a great film to watch, like, in the middle of the summer. You know, it just has that aesthetic to it. A lot of seasonal atmosphere. The themes and the conflicts, I think, were nicely developed. You know, you have the main character who struggles to make that leap to kill someone with his sword, because he would rather defuse a potentially violent situation rather than uh, exacerbate it. And that's kind of the main theme of the film. Will our protagonist take that step and kill a human being? And in order to test him, the scriptwriters introduce a conflict that's close to his home. Even before he has a chance to leave and fight for the Shogun, some bandits or potential bandits arrive in town and could be a threat to the people there. And I thought that conflict was nicely executed. Because when all is said and done, you kind of question whether or not the proper actions were taken by our protagonist. You know, especially Shinya Tsukamoto's character, the, the samurai master, so to speak. You know, he, he, he does some things. And it's like, at first you're like, okay. But then you're like, well, is that really the, the right thing to do there? You know what I mean? And that's what this film, that's the question that this film poses. And I like that. You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about after you see the film. Uh, it felt pretty natural how things played out. There's some playful interaction. Makes our protagonist likable. You know, Tsukamoto, very talented at this. Which is kind of surprising, considering how weird and violent his films can be. You know, if you've ever seen the film Gemini, there's a scene by the river in that movie where the, the female lead's acting quite playful. And uh, you get similar scenes in Killing, with uh, Yu Aoi's character and how she reacts to things. You know, she has a certain petulance or childishness about her behavior at times, but it's also endearing, and that's a credit to her as an actress and Tsukamoto as a director. Uh, I've always been impressed with Tsukamoto's ability to infuse humanism and relatability into his films, regardless of how intense, crazy, or weird they might be. 
and you'll see that in this film. Uh, Yu Aoi is fantastic in this, okay? Great balance in her performance. She's talented at expressing extreme emotion in convincing ways, and uh, but all of the acting in this film is really top-notch. Sosuke Ikematsu has been in a bunch of stuff over the years, but I think the first time I remember noticing him in a film was in Death Night or Death Note, Light Up the New World, just because he was kind of weird in that movie. But he's good in this. He's very good. After seeing Killing, he's another one of those uh, Japanese actors to look out for in the future if you haven't seen it, uh, much of his stuff already. And then sh we got Shinya Tsukamoto himself, who has actually more acting credits than directing credits. So <laughs> it's almost like he's an actor over a director. Uh, you know, you can make that uh, claim. So he knows what he's doing, and he gives another solid performance. The sword fights and training sequences are nicely choreographed and filmed most of the time, okay? Over the years, you know, I have noticed that on certain occasions, Tsukamoto will get too wild with his camera work. I think Tetsuo the Bullet Man is a good example of that. Most of the time, he does it perfectly. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes he gets a little wild. I do think that happens once in Killing, uh, during like a, a cave fight scene, where it really gets a little, a little too shaky for my, for my liking. I would have preferred a little bit more, uh, use the same camera work you used in all the sparring matches. I think he should have used in that scene, in my, in my opinion. Uh, not as clean as I would have liked. Uh, we do get to see the aftermath of the sword fight, though, which was quite gruesome. <laughs> so, we get that. The finale, again, I guess that's why some people call this an anti-samurai samurai film. It's very different from a typical Chambara film or samurai flick. You have like this long trek into the forest, which is just as like tiring and treacherous as actual, you know, the the duel itself. So I found that pretty interesting. There are some dramatically intense and uncomfortable moments in this film. Uh, you know, there is there are some dodgy scenes in this. Just not a lot. It's not gratuitous, but it's it's there. So just be warned about that. Killing is you know it's another impressive Shinji Tsukamoto film. You know, it it sets itself apart from a lot of other samurai films out there. <clears throat> and uh, you got some good characters, a good theme. I strongly recommend it. You know, especially if you're into this director, definitely check it out. Uh, it is available on Blu-ray from Arrow Video as part of the, uh, the Solid Metal Nightmares box set of films. But it's also available online, and I think it, it was released on physical media elsewhere as well. So, got a lot of options for this one, which is good. It's good that Shinya's films are, you know, a lot of them were basically caught up on his films. Uh, I don't know if what his next film is going to be or whatnot, but we're pretty much caught up at this point. So check it out. It's a good flick. And as always, we'll see you next time.